get started. Let's get right on this. Now, I have a lot to cover. There's going to be a lot to cover. This is a great educational video for you. So, because um, there, I've looked all over YouTube and nobody put up a video on this for this particular model machine. One thing I want to tell you is if you have ADHD, or if you can't concentrate, or if you can't be patient, you're going to miss a whole lot of information on this. So my suggestion is to save this video and watch it in sections, but make sure you watch it, turn up the volume and listen, and then go back and watch it a few times because there's a lot I'm going to be giving you. With that said, let's move on. Now, this is the border hoop. This is the hoop that comes with your UL. Well, it doesn't come with your ULT. It was an, a, an extra purchase. Okay? And you can see right here, it's got the little label on there showing repetitive of a design. Okay? So this is the border hoop. Now, the modern machines, the border hoops, they have a clamping where it actually lifts up and you slide the material then you clamp it back down. This is prehistoric. This is before that time. So this did not have that type of a hoop. So, in order to get perfect placement, I found an easy way to do it and I'm going to share that with you all. Now, in one of my last videos I did for my brother SE625 for the continuous hoop, I showed you about using the double-sided leather tape to put onto the back of your inner hoop. Okay? All right, so today I'm going to be sewing on interfacing. This is a cutaway interfacing because this is what I'm going to sew and test on. If ever you want to save money on fabric, get yourself a big roll of cutaway stabilizer. Believe me, it's economical to get one of these big rolls if you're going to be doing a lot of embroidery. And remember, cutaway compared to tearaway. Cutaway stabilizer is used for knits. And tearaway stabilizer is used for wovens. I'm going to use the cutaway because it doesn't perforate or tear like a, a cutaway stabilizer would. So that's what I'm going to use for testing. Now what I did off camera before I started is I drew a center line all the way down. All the way down I drew a center line. Now when we start with the embroidery for continuous, we start at the top and then we, and this is, say, this is the machine right here. This is your hoop. This is your hoop in the machine. And what you're going to do is you're going to advance it forward with each section that you do. You advance it forward. Okay? All right. Now, here's what we're going to do. And I showed this last time, and I want to show you again. I take my hoop, and I have the registration indi indi indication here. I mark it red on top so it matches the red on the top here so I know I'm always going to put that hoop in the right way because it's very easy to put it upside down. You can mess it up. That's with any hoop. All right. So now I'm going to take the registration from the bottom here, right here, and the top here. Now I'm going to turn this sideways so you can see me doing this better in the camera. Okay. So here's the registration mark indentation in the hoop and here's one on the bottom. So what you can do is you're going to Look at that line, and you're going to line up. And with that double-sided tape that's stuck there, there it is. You've got perfect placement. Perfect placement. Can you beat that? No, you can't. All right, now here's the next thing we're going to do. The template grid that comes with your hoop. Now, you haven't seen me use this yet because there's all different ways to use this. But here's what I want you to do. I want you to lay that in your hoop. Then I want you to take a like a blue magic marker. And you see where that dot is here? That circle? I want you, where that circle is, I want you to mark it right, keep an even line and mark it right on the hoop. And don't worry, these this will come off the hoop with alcohol. Do the same thing here, here, and here. These are registration marks for you. Trust me, it's going to make a big difference for you when you're hooping. All right? All right, so now we're going to take the hoop and drop it in our outer hoop. Push it in, and there it is. Move it over here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten it just a little bit more. 
before I put it in. Because I want kind of a firm press as I put it in. I want to have good compression. And I could do just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. I want it to have good compression when it goes in. There, that's better. Now, now I'm going to tighten it with my thumb or my my hand. Just as much as I can. Okay, then I'm going to burp it. What does burping mean? Okay, here's the under layer. I'm going to push that middle hoop, that inner hoop out. You see that came out? See how it burped through? And that's going to give it even extra more compression. You see that? And here and on this side. And then make sure you go and make sure your hoop is tight enough. Tight as much as you can. If you have weak fingers, you can use a screwdriver, but you don't want to over tighten it, and I'll explain why. If you over tighten it, this inner will bow on you. It'll start bowing on you, and you'll have no, it'll, it won't lay on the fabric. So this is tight enough, and with that double sided tape, it's really going to hold that inner well. So now we're going to take this to the embroidery machine and I'm going to walk you through some setups on the machine and show you uh, a lot of things that um, I'll make it easy for you. Just like I said, take your time watching this, listen, watch it a few times and uh, there's a lot here for you. There's a lot of information. So let's move on. All right. So when you got your border hoop, it came with a, a floppy disk of all these different um, border designs. This will only work when you engage on your screen the border icon. These will only work for the border icon. Sometimes when you load a file onto your computer machine here, your ULT, you may find that when you bring it up it won't come up. Well you have to realize that oh is that a border design? You know, Did I save it as a border design? You'll find those things out with a little bit of experience and what I covered today. So you can go ahead and look at those. What I'm going to do today is I found this amazing design series card. This was an actual card, not a floppy. Nancy Zeman. This was one of Nancy Zeman's designs. And back then, these cards came with a pamphlet that showed you all the different designs. Let me see if I can get it out of here. There we go. Well, here's the back. So the back of this of the car of the case, the CD case, would show you all the designs that were included with this card. And then for the machines that did not have a screen that showed you the color and everything, because some of the original embroidery um, machines that came out had a monotone screen. So this would tell you, show you the colors and everything. All right. All right, so this, this computer screen on this machine is very long and narrow. So I'm gonna be moving my camera up and down for you guys. So just bear with me. Let me just adjust this here. There we go. All right, so now what I'm going to do is, because I want to do, well, let me just show you. If you click embroidery, there are no extra icons here. And you figure you think to yourself, how am I going to get my 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 border hoop? You know, how is this going to work? Well, what you have to do is you have to you have to click embroidery edit. And once you touch embroidery edit, the color of the screen changes, and then you have your border, and if you bought the buttonhole attachment, it's got the buttonhole. So I want to make it a border. Okay? Now, what I did earlier was, because that design I showed you from Nancy was two colors, there was no way when I brought this up that I could make it monotone. The modern version machines beyond this had a way on, on all the designs I could click to make it monotone. So what I did was, I brought the design up on the screen. Okay, I brought the design up on the screen from the card. Once I had it on the screen, I set it to sewing. Then I saved it onto my floppy. I took it to my software, and I edited it just for one color. Then I put it on the floppy. I brought the floppy back into the machine. Let me go get, let me get the design here. I bring the floppy back into the machine, 
and then I choose floppy. And depending on how much, depending on how many designs are on the floppy, it'll take a while to come up. Remember, this is old technology. Okay, this is like going jogging with your grandmother. Okay. I don't have that many designs on. There we go. All right. So let's see which does which design was it? Was it this one? Let me look here. Retrieving the pattern. No, it wasn't that one. It was this one. Let's see if it's that one. It's retrieving the pattern. Yeah, that's the one. Because I edited it just for one color. Do you see that? All right. So now that I edited it for one color, I am going to hit the little button here. Set. Then this little arrow button right here, you touch that. Now what I like to do is, well here's what's going to happen. Whenever you're embroidering, let me show you on the screen here. Whenever you're embroidering this design, and when it's done, you're going to take that design, you're going to move it forward on your, your hoop. But you have to have registration marks done on here. So when you move it forward, those registration marks will come to the top, and then you have to connect those registration marks, align them, to be able to sew again, so this, this design will line up to the next design. So how do we do that? All right, so after we click that arrow, I'm going to click that, and I'm going to well, touch. I'm going to touch that and that. Now you can see the bottom three are all highlighted. So I'm going to get a design, I'm going to get an arrow here, on the fabric, it's going to also embroider an arrow here, an arrow here. That's called a registration mark. Or as my friend Darlene likes to call it on her singers, she calls it a GPS. Okay, so I like what she calls it. We're going to call it GPS. I'm going to borrow that from my friend Darlene. All right, so now we just initiated GPS. Okay, after that, we're going to close. Okay, then I'm going to hit end, and then I'm going to touch sewing. And the embroidery arm just got into place, and now I'm ready to embroider. So let me load up my hoop, and I'll show you. All right. I'm going to slip it into lift the foot, slide it in, put the foot down. And all my extra fabric is right in front of me. So if you have a little stool or something you want to put in front of your chair, if this was a heavier fabric, you want to make sure that you support this fabric so it doesn't prevent the hoop. All right, so now what I'm going to do, uh, let me, all right, the foot is down, and now I'm going to hit start. Uh-oh, did you hear that beep? Let me cut my scissors. What is that beep? That beep is, it says the thread. There's not much thread in there. Now, this is a flaw of this machine. And I'm going to show you. Let me lift this and show you. I still have plenty of bobbin thread in here. Look at all that bobbin thread I still have. Can you see that? There's still a good amount of bobbin thread in there. And actually, I was using this bobbin earlier, and I had more bobbin thread on there, and it was beeping that I was almost out of bobbin thread. This is a flaw of this machine. I took this machine to my mechanic, and I showed him if there's any adjustments he could do, and he tried, and he said, I can't do any more. So actually, I had a little more bobbin than this when it started beeping in my, when I was sewing off hand when I was testing before I did this video. So I'm going to have to just put a full bobbin in so that thing doesn't annoy me. But it's really funny because you got to remember, this machine, the original machine was 2001. This is a 2003 when it came out, right? Okay. I bought a Janome last year that was made like 10 years ago. And that Janome made 10 years ago has the same problem. But brother, after this model, when they made the next model, which was the Elegante, well, the baby lock was the Elegante, um, the babe, the brother version, I think it was a 2800D maybe, don't quote me on that, but the baby lock version was the Elegante. They, the baby, uh, brother corrected that. So you weren't, there wasn't beeping on you with so much bobbin thread still left. And they switched from a class 66 to a class 15. So brother was always ahead in technology, but somebody rushed this out the door like every model. I'm a, I'm a multi-machine user. And every model that I have, every brand 
there's a little cork to it. Every model brand has a cork to it. And I discovered these as I'm using them. So don't think that there's something wrong with your machine when it beeps at you and there's still a ton of th bobbin thread on there. It's a flaw, manufacturing flaw of this machine. You can just ignore it and keep and keep uh, embroidering, but keep an eye on it because you know after a while it'll it will stop on you. Uh, it'll go out. But the nice thing about this machine is it does have a sensor also to let you know if the upper thread is broken. If there's no bobbin in there and no thread sewing on top it will beep at you to let you know okay so want to cover that with you so you guys knew that all right so let me go back to this and it actually just started to embroider so I don't, i'm not going to do any back stitches because it really didn't miss anything so let's just continue normally you would do a back trace if you know when you cut the thread you do about 10 stitches back to get started again i'm not going to do that here but you guys will know how to do that it's on your computer screen what? You say you don't know how? You didn't read your instruction manual yet? All right, let me show you. Oh, you guys got to read your manuals. You got to read your instruction manuals, guys. All right, so here's what it is. See this plus and arrow? Let me get my little... And if you, if you find a little stylus to use, it makes it a lot easier for you. All right, so you see this little arrow here with the needle? Touch that. And then there's your mine there is your minus sign and your plus sign. So if you want to go back 10 stitches, that's minus 10 or plus 10. So I just did back 10. That's how you go back to catch up where you left off and then click close. Okay? All right. I did that for you. Okay? All right, here we go. Now let's start. Remember, this machine, this model came out in 2001, and this is the 2003 version, and on every version, 2001, 2002, and 2003, guess what this has? It has the little green plus sign. What does that do? That follows on the screen to show you where it is embroidering, okay? Now, on my Janome MC9900 that I own, which was just made, I think, like 10, 10, 10, 11 years ago, it does not have the plus sign. My little SC625 brother that we paid under $300 for at Walmart has this technology. So you see, uh, like I said, every brand I own has quarks. It has good and positive, good and negative, you know, so this is great and for the price of this machine this this machine here is going for like 500 bucks used guys and that's a good price to get it for okay so there's a lot of great things in this in the features of this um ult machine now watch that move as we're embroidering It put the registration arrows here. So now let's take this out of the hoop and move the fabric forward to reposition to keep continuous sewing. Let's go back to the table. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is cut these little jump threads here that go f right across here. And I don't want to cut this. I'm not going to touch this right now. 
I'm just cutting these little jump threads here. See, this is old school cutting jump threads. It's old school. All right, now I'm going to loosen my thumb screw a bit. And then I'm going to pop this out of the hoop. All right, now take the hoop off. Okay, now here comes the fun part. All right, you see these little arrows here? Let me just move this out of the way. Okay. Oh, it looks like I can cut that. All right. There's three arrows. Remember I had you put these little blue dots here? I had you put these three, those blue dots here. You're going to take these blue dots and you're going to line them up. See, I'm going to line them up so they're horizontal. And then vertical, I'm going to line the blue line with my mark indentation marking on my hoop. So right now, I'm going to line that up as close as I can. And then press. So these arrows are horizontal with these blue lines on my hoop. And the horizontal line I put in before is matching with the indentation of the registration marks on the hoop. Now I'm going to pop this back in the hoop. Are you getting excited, guys? Huh? How many of you had this machine and never did this because you can never get it lined up right? Well, fear not, you're going to get it lined up now. Okay, just let me... <gasps> Look what I did, guys. It's not fitting. Why not? Here's the stupid mistake I made, and here is a great reason. I put the top on the bottom instead of on the top. You see that? Didn't follow my own advice. You see how that helped though? Because I think, well, why wasn't it fitting in my hoop right? All right, the red has to go up because I marked the red mark there. You see how all these little things will help you? All right, so let me reposition that. There we go. There we go. See that? Operator error. 99.9% .9 of the problems with our machines are not our operator error, and we all do it. We all do it. But what's the first thing most people want to do? That stupid machine. That stupid machine. When it comes to just little things like this, it's it's us. It's not the machine. Remember that. All right. But everybody makes a mistake because everyone's got a lot on their mind. Everyone, you know, is trying. I'm getting excited here to show you this. And look, I even forgot to follow my own little red dot. But when I was lining the hoop, I was like, why isn't this fitting right? And I looked like, oh, my red line on my hoop. Now, there it is. It's up at the top and it's matching. So let's go back to the machine and show you how to line all this up now. Oh, wait a minute. I see something I don't like. Oh, I see something I don't like. I'm actually off a little bit down here. Look at that. Well, let's rehoop it again. See, that's the best part. You can rehoop it again. Let me redo that because I don't like that. Because it's not going to line up right when you go to do the next part. So let me just lift this and move it over a bit. There, that's better. It's lined up better. See how easy it is? Look at because it's the tape holds it in place. You don't have to worry about the hoop shifting on you. That is ingenious, isn't it? That is just such a I don't you know, I've been playing with different things. I mean I, I did videos before showing you how to stick sandpaper, the double sided the, the stickable sandpaper so your hoop holds but your fabric holds better in the hoop and everything. And then I saw them wrapping tape around the sides and I'm like, on the sides ain't really gonna do all that great. And I thought, what if I did this on the bottom, right? And sure enough, as soon as I put it on the bottom, it works so much better. I was like, that's how we do it. That's how we do it. Now, the double-sided leather tape, which is a quarter inch I used, 
You can get this at online from any of the big major places that sell all the notions for sewing and everything. So just go to Google and enter double-sided uh, leather tape. And then once you get to the site, they'll, they'll usually have different sizes. So get the quarter inch. And if you got bigger hoops that are wider, you can do half inch. Okay? All right, let's go to the sewing machine. All right, I only have one camera set up today, so you're going to have to bear with me. All right, so there are what we're going to be following. You see where it has the needle position to the left, the center, and the right? Well, right now, this needle position is in the center. And what we want to do is we want to make sure that arrow that was sewn into our fabric, the needle goes down exactly where that was sewn in. And if it doesn't, we use these arrows to go up or we might go to the side because it needs to be side. So let me show you. So let's go over here. All right, now I can see that I need to bring, I need to go up pretty high, so I gotta move this. All right, now what did I do, guys? I did not hoop this low enough. I'm way above my blue marks. And see, I did this purposely to show you. I am way above my blue marks. My blue marks. The fabric is way above my blue marks. And I did this purposely to show you. These marks have to be down further right where that blue is. So that's a mistake I made. So I'm going to go rehoop this and come back because I cannot move this arrow. The arrows I'm pushing to move the needle up higher, it's not moving. It won't go any further. So this was something I wanted you to see. All right, now let me rehoop this. I'll be right back. All right, so now that I have it rehooped, I'm going to show you when I go to try to drop the needle. You can see it's not even near this. So your needle has to be in the highest position. I'm going to move those arrows to position that. And then come over. Oh, went just a little too far. Needle has to go up higher. Boy, that looks pretty perfect. That is pretty perfect. You see that? All right, now I'm going to touch that icon with those three needles and it's going to move. Oh, let's go up higher. There again. This it does not work when the needle is down. Raise the needle. Okay, well, let me raise the needle. There we go. There we go. Now, when I press it, it went over to the right. So let's see how far off I am on the right. Oh, that's pretty good. That lined up pretty good there, right? All right, now let me hit one of those other three needle, those needles again. And now it's going to go over to the left, and let's, let's touch that. That is perfect. That GPS is perfect. You see that? Now I can hit go and continue to sew and it'll sew the next design down. Let's start. You ready? Let me get this camera set up here. And those three with the needles I was talking about earlier, right here. You see that? These right here. Each time you press it, it goes to a different location where the registration marks were so you can line it up. And then if it wasn't lined up properly, if your needle wasn't on one of them properly, then you just use these arrows side to side or up and down to line it up perfectly. That's how easy this is. You just have to make sure that your hoop is hooped properly. And see, with the blue marks, you've got better registration. So, with this way this hooping is, the blue marks I put on here are a guide for you to make sure that when you bring it, see when I go over here, there it is, right there. You see that? Go over here, right there. Okay? And these, you can always, if you mark it wrong, you can use alcohol to wipe this off and then remark it again. See how easy that is? Ah, it's, it's like all these years we all were fighting and saying, like, oh, this is, it's not easy, it's not easy. Well, thank you, Lord, for the double sided leather tape. Makes a big difference, doesn't it? Okay, let's go.
Would you look at that? <laughs> Would you look at that? Now, every time you do this, you're going to get better and better and better. Now, this design was not actually made for to be a continuous border, but it looked like it was, and it came out pretty decent. Although you can see, even though I got it really close up here, let me get this close to you. This was off a little bit here, and it's off just a little bit there. So if I, and right here it's a little bit off too. So, but if I moved it over, see, I might have had this position, I could have moved over and up a little bit. But you know what, you're not going to notice that from a distance, and you're going to learn. You're going to learn every time. You see where I had that off just a little bit there, there, and there. But you're going to learn how your needle needs to be positioned the more you do this. But boy, what a great time saver having that tape to do this border hooping. And then when I pop it out, and as you perfect, as you go with each design and you get to know your design, you're going to have continuous uh, design. And see, then right now you rehoop it again to keep going. And this is great for along the table skirt, uh, your bed sheets, even if you're doing draperies. Look at this. Isn't that great? All right. I hope this takes the fear out of embroidery with the continuous hoop, the border hoop. They call this the border hoop. They didn't call this a continuous hoop, but I'm going to tag this continuous hoop on my YouTube video because it will bring in more people so they can see this in case they have this machine in the closet. They could pull it out and start doing it because, uh, you know, they weren't doing it before because they could never get it done right. The newer machines, the modern machines, they have like a built-in camera. And if they don't have a built-in camera, the other modern machines, you could take a picture with your cell phone or your tablet. And then you'll, you'll have perfect placement. Um, you can edit on the tablet. It, there's just so much more advancement today. But if you are on a budget or if you're just growing with it, with um, this tr with craft, you can get yourself this machine for like around 500 bucks and if it has the upgrades because this is an upgrade okay it has to have the upgrade to do this and the upgrade for this again is the border so if you see that the, whoever's selling it has the border hoop as the upgrade and let's let me get out of this and I'll take take you back okay get out of this okay so if it has the border and the buttonhole attachment because it'll do fancy buttonholes for you too so just um, be aware of that just because it's this model number doesn't mean it has the upgrades but the 2003d came with those upgrades my 2001 when I bought it I bought the upgrades the border and the uh, the uh, buttonhole so happy sewing everybody happy embroidery enjoy this craft this craft this craft is just an amazing craft to do is there's so much fun it's so relaxing and as I tell everybody what does sewing teach you sewing teaches you how to be self-sufficient and independent because like I'm here as a teacher helping you and then you'll go ahead and you'll do all this yourself and you'll like move things around and maybe you'll even use the border one of the borders from the border floppy that came with it the floppy disk where they'll line up exactly perfect because they're meant to be a total border. But this is what you can do if you want to do just from other designs. And other designs may not match either, either but you'll get them close enough where you don't have to worry um, about not getting them close enough because you can do it with your GPS marks here. And then these just pick right out. All these just pick right out. So enjoy it. Until my next video, you guys practice, have fun, look for these used, good old used machines. And like I told you in my last video, as long as that screen is bright and you can see it, as long as that screen lights up, and always try to test drive these machines. And if you cannot test drive and you find one online, make sure whoever the buyer is posts samples of it being sewn out. And also make sure they tell you that it's been serviced. It's important that the machine's been serviced, so when you get it, it will run flawless for you, okay? And be sure that you question the way they're going to ship it. I had I ordered a machine online. He promised me to be shipped. There was no problems. Well, the way he shipped it, there was no cushion in the box, and the machine was cracked. He did give me my money back, but he was a little upset, 
and I was upset because I even questioned him about the shipping beforehand. So, because you got to understand, there's a lot of amateurs selling these machines and, and packaging them up. And they have no idea how these things are tossed around. Even though they say fragile, they'll get tossed around. So, if you're ordering from a professional, I notice there's a lot of dealers selling used machines on eBay and stuff now, too. So, they're going to pack it right for you. They will pack it right for you. Take care. Talk to you soon, everybody. Keep these tips in mind. Watch this video several times and practice. Practice, practice like a musical instrument. Keep practicing. Love you all. Take care. Happy sewing, happy embroidery, happy life. Enjoy yourselves.